Oh man, this is a good fish. It's another redfish right in that same area. All right, welcome back guys. So I know you're probably realizing right now my voice isn't matching up with the film. What happened is I had so much wind in my microphone that you couldn't understand what I'm saying. So instead of you guys suffering through me trying to talk over wind noise, I figured we'd do a dub over. We'll get to the same place and then we'll rock and roll with this video. So today we started out in West Bay on the South Shoreline. We had a 15 to 20 mile an hour southeast wind. So we kind of went down to Jamaica Beach. We launched. We tucked in back behind the uh, back behind the, the shoreline there, and uh, we went after them. The focus today was big trout, which, as you'll see in this video, is not my forte, and I just cannot seem to figure these cats out. We had a great day. Uh, we caught some good fish. But still not the target species. I am not Trout Master Flex yet, um, and I'm going to continue all winter to get there. So stay tuned. I uh, hope you enjoy the video, and uh, we'll, we'll get into it right now. A little bit of bait in here. That's the first mullet I've been around. I'm trying to find bait. I I tend to key on mullet. Mullet are my happy my happy place. So right now I'm trying to find some mullet jumping around. The hope is that the trout will be around them. The first stop over there in Jumble, there was no trout. The water was kind of dirty. It's the bottom of an outgoing tide. Things just didn't look right. It didn't feel right. So I moved over here into another little marsh, a little drain. The ditch kind of dumps out. All these little marsh fingers dump out into this ditch and then out into the main bay. So we'll see if the fish are laying in here. If not, we're gonna keep running until we find mullet. Uh oh, there's a little bite. Got him. All right. A little trout laying in there. We found a little bait. Then we found a little trout. It's actually not a bad trout. We all know what happens when I try to pin down and fight a fish. So I'm going to get this guy in. Then we're going to pin down and work this area. Oh! <laughs> well, catch and release, I guess. Trout number one in the boat and then immediately back out of the boat. I'm all right, I'm cool with that, no worries. We found the bait, immediately we found a trout, first drift. I am okay with that. It's only our second drift of the morning. We made one long drift over in Jumble and then moved over here. So I'm gonna pin down now, power pole down. And I'm gonna work this little area for a couple casts. This is the first place I saw mullet, small mullet. Perfect size ones, kind of flipping around. I see a deep hole. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a sandbar right here that hooks back around the end and then sandbars out. There's a deep pocket. I want to drift up to it. Look at this. Got my tail bit off. All right, let's get a fresh lure, and then we'll get back at it. You guys know me. You know what I throw. I'm going to put a couple of these in my pocket. I'm digging these lures. Um, hooked up baits. He's sending us some fun colors. I really like this one. He's sending us some fun, fun colors. Uh, this gold digger that Corey's been throwing. I just can't quit. This is my comfort lure, man. I'm really bad about when I find something that works. I don't change. I stick with it religiously and I'm kind of like that with this 
pearl and chartreuse right now. I love these things. They seem to work. I have a lot of confidence in them. I'm still on that eighth ounce Hobie twist lock jig head. Just thread it in there and rock and roll. I'm really digging these lures. I know uh, hooked up baits, Captain Jason's working on some new colors. We've been working with him on some new style swim baits. Um, looks like he's really coming out with some fun stuff. I can't wait to see what he comes out with in the future because I'm really liking these baits. All right, let's get another one on. Ooh, that was quick. Freaking first cast. Holy cow. That's another trout. Oh, it's a little redfish. Look at this. Let's pin this down real quick. This guy is lit up. How pretty. Look at this little guy. Look how tatted up he is. Pretty blue tail. Four spots. Oh, man. Four, eight. Oh, he is all tatted up. He inhaled that lure, too, to be such a little guy. So that's the first cast. I just moved to another spot. I moved down to the west a little bit. This is the first cast I've made here. Pin down and make a few more casts, see what's going on. This might be a good area. That was literally the first cast here. I just kind of idled my way back in here. It's super shallow on either side. So I just kind of found the gut and just kind of idled down the crab traps. Found a place that looked good. There's a lot of mullet in here. Trash can slam day. All I need is a little tiny 10 inch flounder and we're in there. A lot more mullet, a lot more bait here. That's shallow on either side, gut right down the middle. This is the kind of area you should be able to find a big trout. It's a pretty muddy bottom. This is kind of identical to what we were looking for. This spot's looking good. Let's see what else we can do here. There's another bite. What is going on? What are these? See, there's another bite. Got him, I got him that time. Finally. It was like every cast I was getting bumped. Oh, this is a good fish. Oh, this is a good fish. Hang on, fellas. This might be a good trout. Oh, no, it's another redfish. What have we found here? Redfish are my jam. That's what I do. But hey, buddy, I'm trying to find some trout today. I'm not mad at you. I'd sit here and catch you all day. It'd be just okay. Looks like he's probably a legal redfish. Choking that pearl and chartreuse. And that's a good fish. Hang on, little buddy. It's probably 18, 19 inches. Just shy of legal. That's a really good fish, so I'm happy. All right, buddy. All right. New spot, pinned down, haven't even started drifting yet. Let's put a fresh lure on and uh, see if there's any more in here. Man, it's a beautiful day for late December. It's 
It's a little chilly, giving me the sniffles a little bit. But I'm out here in shorts and a t-shirt, 60 something degrees, December 28th. Man, you've got to love living in the south. You get a little taste of cold here and there. But for the most part, it's it's nice all year. Who'd have thought this late in December be out here in freaking shorts? What are temperatures? High 50s, low 60s where I'm at. Sun's up high. These flats ought to start really warming up. When those flats start warming up, that's when it can get fun. Your reds and trout will start pushing out of their little cold water hunts and they'll push up and start feeding up on the flats. So I'm trying to kind of buy some time. Maybe I can maybe I can sight fish a big trout later. I'm not really sure. They tend to be really spooky. I just stick to what I'm doing. This seems to be working. Come on. One more bite. Come on, baby. Give it to me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's a snag. Oh, man, what a heartbreak. Look at this. I thought we just hung freaking mondo oh it's a mondo cove dude god dang it pensacola boys will remember the mondo cove what was that back in the 90s was it i can't remember what boat it was i remember the boys right there yakking all them old cobias and the big mako rolled by <laughs> <laughs> that was way back before videos and Facebook and all that stuff back when we were deckhands and there was a cell phone video old flip phone video the boys yelling it's a Mondo Cove and it was a freaking 800 pound Mako swimming around with a tarpon in its mouth oh Robert Adams will remember that Brian Pitts all you boys will remember that stuff man that was so funny Oh, I'm about to chuck myself out of the boat. See if we can pull the boat over there. Technique with spinner reels, I don't know if it works good with bait caster, but if you can reel down to the lure, there you go. A lot of times you can push it off whatever it's hung to and not have to break it off. All right, cool. Let's get back to fishing. Anyway, back to the Mondo Cove story. If any of you guys from back in the day watch this video and y'all remember that, what boat was that? Was it the Snapper Trapper? What boat was that that did the Mondo Cove? Robert Adams will know for sure. I'm not sure if Robert's watching these videos or not, but Robert and I decanted together back, way back in the 90s in Pensacola. And uh, we kind of came up through the ranks and ended up being captains later on, you know, 10, 15 years later. Um, but freaking hilarious story. One of the greatest stories out of our town. Anyway, let's get back to fishing. We're at a low battery, so we're going to drift until the battery dies. And then we're gonna change batteries and make a change. This spot started out hot. We caught two redfish right away. Quite a few, oh, 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 oh. There we go. There we go. Come on, battery, don't die. Come on, battery, don't die. Woo! Oh man, this is a good fish another redfish right in that same area man how cool is that all right let's get him in the boat there we go there we go there we go we got him we got him y'all hang on let me uh do a battery swap here real quick and then uh we'll do a let go all right welcome back guys that was near tragedy 
So I got the battery changed. I still got the red fish in the deck. I'm going to get out the measuring board, measure that fish. If he's legal, we're going to take him home and do, uh, do a catch and cook with him. If he's not, we'll give him a good release and we'll, uh, we'll go back to fishing. I'd like to do a catch and cook. Uh, I'd like to do a redfish on the half shell today if we get one that we'll keep. This guy does not want to go on the half shell. 20 inches in Texas. 20 inches, he's legal. I think we're gonna keep this one. We're gonna do a catch and cook with a redfish on the half shell. Oh, oh, we about did not do anything. So we're gonna keep one and that'll be it. And then we're gonna get back to fishing. Awesome, man. Heck yeah. Come out here today to catch big trout. And so far we've caught one small trout that jumped off on the edge of the boat and three redfish. Let me get everything situated here and uh, we'll get back to it. Stand by. All right, holy crap, that was crazy. Battery almost died, redfish illegal, boat drifting, crab traps. This is the same spot we caught those other two reds earlier, 25, 30 minutes ago. We're gonna give this a few more minutes. Man, I did not expect to find redfish sitting here. I mean, I catch a lot of redfish in this marsh, so I don't know why I'm surprised. I guess I'm surprised they're just focused right here. Earlier when I pulled in, I pulled right next to this trap. They started fishing and we pinned down and we caught two redfish and missed a couple. Drifted all the way out to that point, ran all the way back in there and worked all that area. Come back out here and pinned down in the same exact spot. First cast to hook another redfish. That's insane. I wish they were that predictable all the time. I guess to some guys they are, just not to me. Come on, let's catch one more. Man, that fish hit really well too. It was a good hit. Again, we're like two and a half, not quite three foot, maybe three feet of water, two and a half feet of water. Right off the edge of a flat. On both sides, we've got flats. Super low tides with this winter. We've got a south wind today, but the tides are still ultra low. I'm just working this little gut right in between them, um, following these crab trap balls. You guys that aren't used to navigating in uh, really low tides, cold water, use crab traps. The crab guys know more about these waters than we ever will. If you can follow a crab trap, you can guarantee it they're gonna put those things where they can recover them. So usually a crab trap identifies at least two feet of water. So I tend to kind of, whenever I'm going into a new area, if there are crab balls, I'll follow them in. Um, I'm in a good situation with a skiff. I can run really skinny. So, and if I do get stuck, it's not that big of a deal to push this boat off a of flat. So I guess I've kind of got it a little bit easier with this rig. Getting stuck is not that big of a deal. Um, but anyway, just to help you navigate some. If you'll watch those crab pots, you'll find that you'll, you'll always be able to get in and out of where you want to. Really had my heart set on a big trout today. But a catch and cook, a freaking uh, redfish. I think I got a fun recipe. There's this... Uh, like a champagne cream sauce I've been wanting to try. I saw it on a guy I follow, a YouTube guy, a Australian YouTuber that I subscribe to. Um, I've been dying to try it since we saw it on his channel. So see what Corey thinks, maybe a late lunch red fish over spinach with like a champagne cream sauce. Sounds freaking stupid, it sounds good. Oh, there he is. Damn good fish. 
good fish. I was over here daydreaming, watching mullet swim by. Little head shake, another head shake. I need to get the power pole down. Oh, it's another little redfish. Oh man, we can pin down now. A lot shallower than I thought we were. Came pull his little butt in here. Yeah, another little small, small underslot red. Been tearing him up today though. Another pretty little guy. A little Louisiana legal. All right, little fella. All right, redfish again. Come out here searching for big trout. I was freaking completely daydreaming. I was just working the lure, watching the bird, just kind of spaced out, wasn't even talking. That guy hit and woke me up. Well, good. So we have caught a fish everywhere we have stopped today. That is uh, That does not happen every day. Every spot we have checked, we have caught a fish. I'm okay with it. That's that's pretty dang cool. Now, granted, we haven't caught a whole lot of nice fish. And I kind of came out here hoping to catch a big trout. Haven't done that yet. But I'm not going to complain. Alright guys, let's take this back to the house. We're going to get that redfish cleaned up. And uh, we're going to make a cool little lunch with Corey. And uh, I guess we'll see you back in the driveway. You guys stay tuned. We're back at the house. Uh, we're gonna get this fish cleaned up. I'm gonna show you how I like to clean redfish, and we're gonna use that Cooter brand knife set one more time. Corey got me an awesome fillet knife for Christmas, so uh, you'll start seeing that more in the videos. But we use this Cooter brand one more time on this redfish so that I can give you guys a good review on it. I'll put that video out in a couple weeks. Uh, let's get this little redfish cleaned up. Let's get him cooked up and uh, see what Corey thinks of our little meal plan. All right, guys, here we go. I'm gonna get this knife out. This is like a seven inch stiff blade here. Out of our little Cuda set here. And then we're gonna give this guy a little cleaning. Redfish, just like anything, the only difference with the redfish is the scales are really hard and the rib cage can be really, really tough to get through, especially on the bigger fish. So there's a couple options on the rib cage. I'll show you one option. Same thing, cut him behind the head, open the ribs up. On redfish, I like to spin them around and then just follow the backbone. Just tracing that fish and then just down on the backbone, follow it all the way back. Once you get to the backbone, go over it. There we go. So you have two options. On a smaller fish like this, we can break through these backbone ribs. You can come right through it. It's not that big a deal. On a bigger redfish, you're not going to get through them like that. So you're going to have to do something different. So on the second one, what I'll show you is I'll show you a different technique. It's actually something this Cuda brand knife kit has that's pretty cool. It's this big serrated blade. I have no idea what they put this in here for. But for me, it works really good on big rib backbones. Like uh, that big grouper we caught down in the Keys. Big redfish when you start getting up at that upper sloth, those seven, eight pound fish. So I'm gonna do the other side the exact same way, except I'm gonna use this to go through the ribs. Same difference, go behind the head. Then we're gonna trace the backbone.
They're just going to start removing it from the backbone. Go over the backbone. There we go. So there you go. Just use this thing to break it so you don't dull up your edge. That didn't go as smooth as I wanted it to, but you get the idea. It's a way to save this blade so you don't dull it all up. Just like anything else, down to the skin, angle your knife. A lot of times I'll take it there, then I'll leave the ribs attached to the skin, just like that. Blade number one. Take this one off and show you the other way. Off the skin, same thing, find those pin bones or those rib bones, follow them down, and then you're gonna have a few little bones in there. There you got it, you two clean redfish fillets. We got a few little pin bones to take out right there, that's it. This is our new cleaning table. Corey got me this for Christmas. It's got a faucet that goes into it and all kind of plumbing. I'm gonna put it together once we find out where we want to keep it here at the house. I'm pretty excited about this thing. This is gonna be fun. Alright guys, let's get these redfish inside and uh, start cooking these things up, see what we can come up with. Y'all stand by. Fish bam. Champagne, bam, bam, butter, bam. Green onions, holla if you hear me. Yeah, yeah, what it do, I. All right, guys, let's get this started. So I got all my ingredients. We're gonna make a champagne butter cream sauce to put over these redfish over a bed of spinach. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to get all of our ingredients ready, get our little onion chopped up, get our little green onion chopped up. Then we're gonna start getting some pans hot. I think this is gonna be good. This is the first time we've ever tried this, but I'm pretty excited about it. So I'm gonna do a little fast forward through the chopping here. Once we're done chopping, we'll move on to the rest of the ingredients. Stand by. Guys, on our fish is boneless. I took the top loin off each one of those redfish fillets. Just a nice little chunk of meat. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give it a quick salt and pepper. And then we're gonna cook these down in a little bit of butter. We're just gonna cook them done. Nothing crazy, nothing special. A little bit of butter melted in the pan. We're gonna cook these down. All our flavor is gonna come from that awesome little sauce we're gonna build. All right, so we got our oil heating up for our spinach. We've got these seasoned up and ready to go in some butter. We'll get some butter hot for these, and then we're gonna start getting that cooked off. All right, let's get everything ready for our spinach. We're gonna put a little olive oil in here, some garlic, and some onion, and we're gonna brown that up, and then we're gonna throw the spinach in there, and then we're gonna start making our sauce over here. So let's get our little bit of onion ready to rock and roll. All right, we're gonna start getting that oil hot. Once it gets hot, we're gonna add in our aromatics. Best thing about champagne cream sauce is obviously the champagne. So Corey's working from the house today, so she's gonna pop the bottle for us. Is it gonna hurt? No. <laughs> yeah, then twist that thing. You shake it? No, no, don't shake it. <laughs> twist this thing, it's, this isn't gonna, it's not gonna pop yet. Twist that little, that's not gonna pop yet. Just twist that little metal thing off, and then take that little metal cap off. Sure, it's not gonna pop. I'm sure. And then take the little metal piece off. <laughs> and then, 
<laughs> now, do we want to go outside and pop it? <laughs> Maybe. Because you're going to take your thumbs and you're going to push it and it's going to, poof, it's going to shoot off. Okay. All right, go outside. We'll go outside and shoot that thing. <laughs> you got a tag on the back of your shirt. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Brad got me a shirt for Christmas, y'all. I haven't taken the tags off yet. All right, right here's good. Or you want to go out in the sun? Uh, we can do it right here. Okay. And then just take your thumbs and start pushing up on the cork. It's not gonna do that bad. I, don't, I feel like I'm gonna drop the bottle. I don't know there. Mm -mm. I don't think I can do it. You can. So you can also take your hands and twist it and it'll pop out. Like that and twist it out. Just keep <laughs> twisting and pull. <laughs> oh god, here it goes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I can't watch. <laughs> she got it, y'all. <laughs> Good job, baby. <laughs> Lily comes to check on me. All right, let's get back to cooking now that right. the drama's over. All right, oil's hot for the spinach. Let's add a little bit of garlic. Hot tamale. bit of onion. And here's a neat trick. Since the pan was a little hot when I threw that in there, we can deglaze that pan with a little bit of champagne. That'll help pull all the little stuck bits off the bottom. It'll clean that pan up a little bit. That worked out pretty good. All right, we're gonna get our spinach in here and get this shut down. Be ready to rock and roll. That is doing perfect. Here in just a second, we're gonna flip that over. Won't take long. You can see the edges already cooking. It's turning white. It's already cooking. That looks really, really good. We're gonna give it about a minute or two and we're gonna flip it. All right, here we go. Let's flip our little redfish loins over. A nice little bit of color to them. Brown it up a little bit. That looks really good. We're going to let them finish on that side. We're not going to flip them anymore. Once they're finished on that side, we'll put them off on a paper towel to dry or to rest while we get everything ready. Our spinach is steaming down. I think it's time to start making our cream sauce. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this to a medium high heat. Just medium heat. Once it gets hot, we're going to put two tablespoons of butter in there. Once that gets hot, with the onions in it, we're gonna throw the champagne in it, let that simmer and reduce, add the heavy cream, simmer and reduce, salt and pepper, then we're gonna pour that over our red fish and spinach and we're gonna eat lunch. See if our pan's ready to start melting this little bit of butter. Perfect. That's melting. Look at that. This is all cooking down. All right, let's start building this sauce. We're gonna melt this butter down. Once it's melted down, then we're gonna start browning off those little white onions. All right, let's go ahead and take our redfish fillets out of here. Oh yeah, looking good, looking good. Look at that.
All right, so the butter, the onions, the green onions are all cooked down. They're starting to get translucent. So now I'm gonna add the champagne. It's a half a cup of champagne. I've already pre-measured it. Half a cup of champagne. We're gonna let that simmer and then reduce. I'm supposed to let it reduce by half. So we're just gonna mix this all up. I'll let that simmer a little bit. And then as it starts to reduce, we're gonna add the heavy cream in. First layer to our champagne butter cream sauce. All right, so that's reduced. It's been about five minutes. It's simmered and reduced down. We're gonna add one cup of heavy cream now. I've already got it measured. One cup of heavy cream, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna let this simmer, and we're gonna let it reduce by half. And then we're gonna salt and pepper, and we're gonna pour it over our fish and our spinach. We're gonna start plating spinach in the fish now. Once we get this all stirred up, mixed up really good, we're gonna start plating. This should be ready in about five minutes. All right, let's start plating. Let's grab our spinach, take it over here to our little plates. Try not to make a mess of Corey's kitchen, which I have failed miserably at so far. We're just gonna put a little spinach on each plate. Then we're gonna set the redfish fillets on top of that. And then we're gonna cover them both in this awesome sauce. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear Corey, but she said I'm awesome sauce. Silly. Sorry. Silly girl. I've been cooped up in the house too long. Alright, here we go. Alright. Alright, so we got our spinach, our fish, and we're about to have some cream sauce. It's simmering nice. We just need it to reduce a little bit. All right, there we go. You can see the original line around the edges. It's reduced by about half. So I'm gonna turn the heat off. We're gonna finish our plating. I'm excited about this. I think this is gonna be good. So we're gonna take our little redfish. We're gonna put it right on top of our little, our little bed of spinach. Just like that. Come over here and grab this rascal. Look at that. Holy cow, that looks amazing. Champagne butter cream sauce over our redfish and steamed spinach. Then we're gonna to top that off with a little green onion. It is time for the moment of truth. Let's get Corey in here and let's see what she thinks of our dish. I am really excited about this. This looks super fun. All right, let me see if I can find Corey. See if we can get her to come here and taste test this. Stand by. All right, I found Corey. She is going to taste test our redfish over spinach with champagne butter cream sauce. That's more four syllable words than I've said in a sentence in my entire life. Sounds super fancy. <laughs> There's one thing I'm not, it's super fancy. I'm excited about this recipe though. It looks really good, it's healthy. We just caught this redfish today. Super fresh, I love spinach, I love redfish. I love champagne, I love butter. I don't see where it can go wrong. Give it a try. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You like it? Yeah. Can you taste the champagne? Mm -hmm. I can't taste champagne, but it's like, um, it's like something that, I don't know if you'd like go to an Italian restaurant and order like a, like a fancy fish plate like yeah. that's what this tastes like it tastes like a fancy fish plate yeah like this tastes good awesome i'm glad you like it
it's definitely a step up, you know, from our our fried fish. Yeah, like we love our fried fish. Yeah, for sure. But this is really this is really good. I love the spinach. Yeah, awesome. The spinach is good. Let me find a fork and then I'm gonna try it. I'll use your fork when you're done. <laughs> Awesome. Let me borrow your fork. All right, so we'll get in here and try it on mine. And then we're going to sit down and enjoy lunch. All right, guys, let's see. Let's see how this tastes. Oh, that's fancy. Isn't that fancy? It is fancy. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like good. Going to a restaurant and ordering, like, the fancy fish plate. Right. Like the, the chef's special. It's really good. It tastes fancy. It, yeah. It's really good. I like, like it a lot. Like this would be really good with a nice white glass of um, white wine. How about a, a white wine? Here's white wine. Got a whole bottle of it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Redfish Catch Clean and Cook had a fun day on the water today. Uh, it was nice to be back out on the skiff today. Uh, Corey had to work, so she couldn't fish with me, unfortunately. But um, look forward to making some more videos for you guys. We're glad this one turned out. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of fun ideas. Hope you guys enjoy them. If you like these videos, remember to like. If you like our channel, remember to subscribe. And, uh, and if you try and make this recipe, I want to hear what other fish you'd recommend for this because this is really, really good, y'all. Y'all need, need to try this. I think maybe a flounder would be good, too. Flounder champagne buttercream sauce. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Hey guys, thanks a lot. We'll see you out there.